Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Cold War Western Alliance Era 1 Entry Tank Destroyer for the sort of British line, the Charioteer A. Now we've already had a video on this tank before but this is like the end of the grind essentially or the end of getting the third mark for this tank, that sort of thing. And it was a very, very enjoyable experience. I absolutely loved playing this tank. I think it's an absolutely solid Era 1 tank destroyer. And that's because its camo's great. Its mobility is fantastic. Its gun's lovely. You've got the nice choice of having those really good pen APCR rounds as standard. And then having the ability to use very, very good Hesh rounds too. And on the whole, this tank was just beautiful to play. And for stuff like that, where, you know, you are a tank destroyer, and you can see as we're on this midridge on Fisherman's Bay, you can just fire and basically very rarely get spotted unless someone is directly in front of you. Like, we were firing through the bushes at the first shot to try and hit that 4,005 blind, and, well, we just didn't get spotted. And then the moment we shot at the 773 that was directly in front of us, that's when we did get lit. And if you use smoke effectively, just like in any of the tank destroyers in Cold War generally, you can fire, and if you get spotted, especially when we're in a sight line like we are here, you could just go, okay, no, pop smoke, run away. And that's basically what, what we did. I really enjoyed this tank. Like I said, I think this tank was, for me personally, a lot more enjoyable than the Conway, just because I feel like it was better than the Conway in the, a lot of ways, or should I say, uh, is on par, actually, it's more, probably the best way of putting it, it's on par with the Conway in a lot of ways, so that, it, I don't know, I just found it a really enjoyable grind, that when I got to the Conway, I was kind of like, oh, it's kind of the charioteer, but bigger, and slightly less manoeuvrable. And the gun doesn't feel like it works as well. Just because the shell velocity on these standard APCR rounds is really good. And it's the same as the premium rounds on the Conway. I mean, if you would fire the full premium, you're fine. I think I covered that in the last video I did on the Conway. Where, you know, you fire premium and the gun feels way, way different. Just because the shell velocity at the distances you're firing is beautiful. And that's something that the charity has going for it with just firing standard. Which means you don't have to think about premium rounds. Which is why I don't carry any premium rounds whatsoever in this tank. Because 268 pen, I believe it is, on the standard AP is... Or APCR. Is enough to go through everything you'll face at Era 1. Absolutely everything. So you don't have to worry about firing premium ever. Pretty much. You just have to switch between the APCR and the Hesh rounds. So in terms of a crew on the old Charioteer A, I do focus on camo because this tank relies on the camo a lot to make use of the tank. And that is I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Steady Aim, Run and Gun, Camouflage Expertise, Muffled Shot and Silent Driving. The camo expertise and muffled shot just to make the camo better in general, make it so that it's harder for me to get spotted when I fire, stuff like that. The Silent Driving because I want to be able to basically reduce the effect of movement on my camo which really helps me to not get spotted by light tanks when I'm moving from position to position it's a really really effective skill to use on tanks that you want to maximize your camo and stuff like that and it's very very helpful because that means that you can get the drop on people very 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 easily because they won't spot you cross it unless they physically see you they will not spot you crossing a gap and that will give you the ability to go take up a sneaky position somewhere else and surprise them and start getting shots into them quite easily. Because obviously they can still physically see you, that, that's true vision, right? But if you still spec for camo, it's still extremely useful because people will tend to focus on what's spotted. And if you aren't spotted and you're farming them, they will eventually find you, but they have to feather the shot on you. They have to try and find you. And by that point, they can be dead, or you could have taken a fair significant amount of their hit points away. And in terms of equipment, I run the Advanced Loader, the Advanced Reload, and the Camo Net. Again, the same Camo Net to make my camo incredible on this tank. The Advanced Reload to be able to switch between APCR and Hesh at my own leisure because the Hesh rounds are so, so useful. You can get up your DPM so, so much fire in those Hesh rounds. It's, it's great. And APCR, so that you can just pen everything if you want to. And then, yeah, the advanced reload, because you want to make your DPM 10% better, as always. 
So as you can see in this game on Fisherman's Bait, we're in a bit of an awkward situation. We've got 4,005s coming for us, and I'm looking at this going, oh god, I pop smoke for one 4,005, he deletes the 268, the other one's coming, it's like, oh, well, I'm dead here, aren't I? Try and make a run at him to put him off, but he does end up hitting us, and thankfully, thank goodness for me, he low rolls and puts us on seven hit points and a dream. We're up to 5.8k damage so far. From that one position, we managed to farm nearly 6k damage because we shot at all the people that are in the town and we kept shooting at the people that were sitting along the back line on the K line. And we've managed to get a very, very nice total for the charities so far. But we're not done. And <laughs> unfortunately... Oh, fortunately, unfortunately, with the 4,005 taking away all of our hit points there, we are in a, you know, a bit of an awkward situation with having nothing left. If we get caught out here and take one more hit, we are boned. So we're just going to try and stay on the edge of it and see if we can keep just slapping the shots in. So there's this TVP88 spotted at the back. We load the Hesh, and unfortunately, he moves just as we fire, so it ends up missing. But that is the perfect Heshable target, and yeah, he just gets behind cover. The 4005 in the other corner, it's like, well, I could try and get rid of that guy, but he's currently being run around by a medium tank. And as you can see on the minimap, he's actually running after that medium tank, which means he comes straight out into the open. We load the Hesh because we want to slap that into that guy's turret. He ends up spotting us for putting that shot in, but our 4005 smashes him and gets rid of him. There's an object 165 in the corner that's been attacked by the medium. We know the TVP-88 is behind that rock, so it's like, okay, you know what? We're going to go after this guy behind the rock, because, well, there's only two medium tanks left. We know where one is, he's just died, so there's only one tank left. We know exactly where he is, he's behind the rock. So let's get after him. By the time we get there, we might have smoke to pop to be able to survive if he comes after us. It's a bit risky because naturally he can finish us in one shot. But if we get there before our team, maybe we'll spot him and we'll get assistance for him. You never know. So we spot the TVP88 there. He's actually looking behind him. The smoke comes back. Pop smoke, so it makes it incredibly difficult for him to get us. He ends up firing. We just heard that shot go out. So it's like, okay, well, don't mind if I do. We pop a shell into his front end there with the Hesh. And he fires again. Is he firing at the rock? I have no idea what that guy is doing. But we end up shutting him down. We finish the game with a really nice total finish with 5 kills, 7.9k damage, nearly 8k, it's only 3 off 8k damage to be fair. 212,000 credits by the way for a tech tree tank, nice. Ace tanker, 2,280 base XP. A really nice game for the charioteer A. Honestly, it was... This tank was such a joy to grind. It was just such an enjoyable experience. Just because the mobility was nice, the camo was great, the gun handling was pretty good. Although, if a little troll at times. And you've got the really nice choice between the really good APCR rounds and the really good Hesh rounds, which have like 210 pen. And you could decide to go with the shell velocity for distance, or you could up your DPM by just firing the Hesh, which doesn't always work, because Hesh is one of those things, it's HE. If it hits spaced armor, just like heat, it won't work, but it will splash. You've got to really make sure you aim for the armor plates to be able to pen those shots. And it can be one of those really awkward ones that sometimes just doesn't, doesn't work, it doesn't go through, so it's just something to bear in mind that you've got to really fire it where you know you're going to be able to pen it, and stuff like the TVP-88 is a tank that I know you're going to pen, unless you get really, un really unlucky, because that thing is made of paper, same as firing at the 4005, that thing is also made of paper in the turret, if a deadly turret that it has. So we're on to the second game, and yeah, this one will achieve the third mark of excellence for the tank, and yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bit a bit of a big game. We're gonna take this position here, and we are going to farm up a lot of damage. Um, we're going to yeah, as you can see, load the Hesh for this TVP fifty slash fifty one, and from this position here, naturally they can see me if they want, but there is a lot of foliage between me and them which means that they will have a hard time picking me out unless I get spotted. So we're just going to keep smashing shots in, especially since my tanks are spotting them. Unfortunately, that shot, on the, with, well, that shot with the APCR didn't actually pen that Centurion. It only did track damage. But, yeah, you can see their team are just sitting in their spawn, which is absolutely beautiful. This is a beautiful thing for this charioteer. And by the way, this, this game was... A little while ago, you'll see from the date, so we haven't got Cold War medals and stuff like that yet. 
And, yeah, we, we won't have that stuff like high calibre that you might expect to see. Yeah, a lot of the Cold War replays I have at the minute aren't from this patch, so you won't see the, the Cold War medals, but that's really the only change. But, yeah, as you can see, we are just waiting. We're getting shots fired back at us, and that's because I think the M46A1 is actually spotted next to me because he got lit up when he poked around to shoot the TVP, so they were shooting shots at him. But now we are unspotted we well we're not we've not been spotted yet this game so far we're just going to keep firing shots out we're just it's all about keeping the gun moving once this position becomes useless that's when we'll move on but as you can see currently this position is just it's giving us free shots everywhere and because our team has clustered at e6 they are spotting their entire team and they're keeping their team so distracted that we're managing to get just a lot of damage on these guys. So you can see the Tiram 4 is spotted up. That's a pretty decent... I've not played the Tiram 4, but from what I gather, it's a pretty damn decent Era 1 medium tank. And we, But the thing is, it's also a fairly easy tank to pen because you go through the upper plate really easily with this gun and you can fight Hesh at it and also go through that quite easily too. And we're just trying to find targets. So this T95E3 is a big target because naturally the T95E3 is a very, very good tank. He ends up giving us his whole lower plate. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to lob a HE shell or a Hesh shell straight through his lower plate. And that lowers him down to the point where he's a one shot and we get rid of that guy. This M103A1 sat still. So we're going to aim for his Capola. And unfortunately, that shell goes somewhere. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Just go somewhere. And it, yeah, doesn't kill him. And we end up missing the M50 as well. We're just looking for a shot to shut down this Tiram 4. We have the side of his turret, and just as we fire, we probably would have shut him down there. He ends up getting shut down by our M103A1. So currently, they are winning 10 8. And it's like, okay, that. Their team are no longer getting spotted along that A-line. It is time for me to move up. We have not been spotted yet, and we've done 5.7k damage. Again, the benefit of having such good camo on this tank, and why you always want to set up for camo, is that the longer you stay unspotted, the longer you can farm, which is always great. And you don't, you don't lose any hit points, and you have more hit points for this sort of time. So we load the Hesh for this 4005, and I think, you know what? No, I'm not loading Hesh. We're going back to the APCR because it's going to be an awkward shot to get that shot into his turret. So we end up slapping the shot into the back end of the 4005, which actually sets him on fire, which is beautiful. But he gets away. And now I'm just going to use this little position on the rocks here to try and see if I can see anything physically to try and get the shots in to shut them down. If I can, that would be absolutely wonderful. But it's not quite working out like that. We're not quite finding the targets that we want so what we're going to do is flank round because these guys were spotted along the c8 position so we're going to go more towards their cap and poke up behind them so that hopefully we can get shots into their side and from this distance we might not actually end up getting spotted and as we poke up we end up seeing well as we were coming over the nm116 and the m46 and a 4005 and it's like oh god that's awkward okay that 4005, we're going to pop a shot into the side of his turret. And I'm thinking, is he staring into the distance? I actually think he's AFK, so I ignore him. And it's like, NM116, you are more important. You're a ridiculous tank. So we get rid of the NM116. We know the M46A1 is at D3. But you know what? If this 4005 was to come back at any point, that's going to be bloody awkward. So we're just getting rid of this guy. And we shoot him exactly where we damage the Amorak. And thankfully, the shot goes in and blows it up. I popped the smoke because I wanted to be able to hit the 4005 and get rid of that guy and not take a hit. And obviously, he was spotting us up. So we got rid of that guy. Now we go in on this M46A1. We slap a Hesh shell into his lower plate. And it's like, okay, you know what? We're just going to get rid of this guy with this T95E3. I was hoping that he'd go for the T95E3 since the E3 had gone over first. But he does get a shot into us, unfortunately. And that puts us up to 9.4k damage. And we're still losing this game. It's 4-3 currently. And we know where one of them is. One of them is currently in the cap. There's still a 4,005 somewhere, which is very awkward. You don't want to ever get caught out by 4,005. In fact, there it is. It's actually a one-shot for us, which is pretty nice. Unfortunately, our guy that was near the cap gets shut down, but we are charging towards this 4,005 because I want to get him gone. This 4,005 needs to go. And that's just... Yeah, we just need the 4005 to be gone. So I was looking for the shot into that 4005, couldn't quite see him. And there, our medium tank spots that 4005. That 4005 clearly hasn't been specced for 
camo because yeah if you spec your camo your 4005 for camo you wouldn't be getting spotted as easily as he is by this t95 e3 which is why you always want to do it but he gets lit up which means we exactly know we know exactly where he is and we shut that 4005 down puts us onto four kills 9.8k damage there's now two people in cap so we have to get back and reset we know there was a medium tank spotted behind us but i think you know what screw it I might, I might take a hit or two from him, but we're going to get over and reset the cap, make it so that we don't have to, you know, get base capped. And I think, oh, maybe I'll take a hit or two. But he actually hits us, and it's like, right, okay, I'm getting out. And then he hits us again really quickly. It's like, oh, God. So we're just going to drop down here. And that little bump against that rock takes all of my hit points away. And unfortunately, that's going to cost us a little bit. And as you saw, that was... Basically, we slid down that hill, didn't take any damage. Poor shot, by the way. We didn't take any damage, and then we just clipped that rock with our track. And it was like, yeah, okay, there goes 250 hit points. Thanks, Cold War Gravity. Yeah, it, it took all of our hit points away. And it's like, oh, God, I needed those hit points. As we've just shut down that Century 2, we've just shut down that FV-101, was it, or 107, one of the two. We shut them down, defended the cap. Puts us onto 10,400 damage. Absolutely epic game for an entry era tank. And there's one tank left, the Centurion 2. We know where he is. And we really did need those 250 hit points because I'm like, I haven't seen him yet. I know he was somewhere over here. And unfortunately, I catch him too late. I didn't see him over the ridge. And he managed to get that shot underneath that, T4, that dead T44. That shot flew under the dead T44 and hits us. And unfortunately, we end up losing that game because the T95E3 couldn't manage to kill that Centurion 2. And finished the game with 1,525 base XP. The first class, 6 kills, 10.5k damage. And the loss in the Charioteer for the third mark of excellence, which is really, really sad because what a game it was. And it would have been so good to win that game. And it's just... He managed to RNG in a nutshell. He just managed to get that shell underneath that tank and that lost hit points to the gravity did us in. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.